full feast. So I had the good fortune to work under Tamal Krishna Goswami Maharaj for maybe for about 20 years, I think, maybe 20 years. Uh, so I'm very fortunate. He gave me a lot of guidance. He gave me a lot of inspiration. He was a very powerful personality. And just this morning, Lokana Swami was asking me, before he gave class, he asked me, he said, what, what, what do you remember about Tamal Krishna Goswami? As I told Lokanas Swami Maharaj, I told him that I remember him as being a very staunch follower of Srila Prabhupada. He was always very deeply attached to Srila Prabhupada. And I think that was a very wonderful inspiration for me because I I didn't have any real association with Srila Prabhupada directly although of course I saw Prabhupada many times and sometimes walked with him sometimes even drove in a car with him but still you know I cannot say I was an intimate disciple of Srila Prabhupada Tamal Krishna Goswami was he was one of the most intimate disciples of Srila Prabhupada and I remember some of the things which he went through under Srila Prabhupada's leadership we heard this morning in the Bhagavatam class, Lokanath Swami was describing how Tamal Krishna Goswami had gone to America and began a big program to distribute books and he'd made many devotees and he had many sannyasis all working under his leadership in the Radha Damodar party. And they were having a big impact, distributing many books and making many devotees also. But there were some problems. And so Prabhupada told Tamal Krishna Goswami, he told him, I'm taking it all away from you. Now, that's not an easy thing to accept to have somebody take everything away from you. Earlier, Tamal Krishna Goswami gave up everything to preach Krishna consciousness. He, he was a GBC man and he had a nice wife, but he gave it all up so that he could put more energy into preaching. So Prabhupada appreciated that, how he'd given up. In those days, to be a GBC man, you should not be a sannyasi. If you were a sannyasi, you were just to preach, travel and preach. But the GBC men were more grihastas. But Tamal Krishna Goswami gave up his Grihastha ashram to become a preacher. And then he was preaching and he had this Radha Damodar party and Prabhupada said, I'm taking everything away from you. So that it's very, but that only increased his love for Srila Prabhupada. He didn't have any regret that Prabhupada had treated him unfairly or harshly, but he accepted it all. Because of course Prabhupada gave him the alternative, he said, you go to China. And in 1976-77 when this happened, China was not 
open, it was not a very open country. It was still recovering from the cultural revolution and foreigners were very few in China and China also at that time economically was not very prosperous. I remember going to China in those days and we would see the roads full of bicycles everywhere and the houses were what we call ping fang. <laughs> you know, ping fang means houses built with bricks, you know, they're on the ground and often without toilets but just some commun communal toilet. So very simple conditions but now it's totally transformed. But Tamal Krishna, when Tamal Krishna Goswami had first gone to China, it was in that condition. It was quite simple. But he accepted that and with great enthusiasm he dedicated himself to that. And although Prabhupada seemed, was seemingly harsh and severe on him, it, it never disturbed his faith in Prabhupada. He always had very strong faith in Prabhupada, even though sometimes he had some conflict between other devotees. You know, there was like some interest that maybe go and hear more from Prabhupada's god brothers, but he never did that. He stayed loyal with Prabhupada. He never went away, even though sometimes the pressure was put on him. But he never ever sh sh uh, slackened his strong and very deep faith in Srila Prabhupada and in the Krishna consciousness movement. I said to him one time, I said, why don't you just stay in Vrindavan and read the books of the Goswamis? And he said to me, he said, that was all I wanted to do, but they wouldn't let me. So they, meaning, you know, like the, the other god brothers, the senior devotees, but that was actually his real interest. He just simply wanted to read the books of the Goswamis and he was totally absorbed, very deeply absorbed in the Vaishnava culture and he loved the culture so much. And just everything was culture, you know, how you serve the food, you know, he would say bitter things first, the sweet last and you know the, the everything had to be done the proper way according to the culture when a devotee was serving prasadam i remember just before he disappeared i was in his apartment the day before we had prasadam with him with many devotees so one devotee was serving prasadam and uh, he said would you like more gurudev and Tamal Krishna Goswami looked at him and said, Would your mother ask you if you want more? <laughs> she would just put it on your plate. Why are you asking me if I want more? Yeah. You know, he's pointing out, this is the culture. The culture is you put food on the plate. Unless you've got your hands over your plate, you know, they'll put food on your plate. This is the culture. And he liked to live the culture, you know. It was his very life. So we're very sorry that he left us so suddenly. And we feel great separation from him. But we know that he's gone to be with Srila Prabhupada and helping Srila Prabhupada in some other place to distribute Krishna consciousness. Tamal Krishna Goswami Maharaj ki.